one, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am talking about how to properly format your manuscript. This was a request from a viewer. Thank you very much for this request. I think I've been out of the trenches just long enough that I was like, wait, it, is that confusing? Apparently it's really confusing, though I think perhaps I just stumbled upon like a really good resource years ago on manuscript formatting and I just went, that's the right way and I barreled forward and I haven't had any problems since. So really the gist of this video is I'm going to tell you and show you how I format my manuscripts and I'm telling you that no one's yelled at me yet. So try it this way. So I use Scrivener and that is kind of almost a cheat because Scrivener does a lot of the formatting for me. So I'm actually going to show you how I set up formatting in Scrivener. So if you do use it, maybe this will help you unlock how to set up your compile feature, which is the feature that takes all of your stuff in Scrivener and pops it out into a nicely formatted Microsoft Word document. But I'll also show you on the screen my document that I sent to my agent, that I sent to my editor. It's basically the same formatting I used when I queried. So the only thing that has changed is the title page. Um, but I will show you that. And I'll tell you, I got my original manuscript formatting advice from Nathan Bransford from his blog. And it is an older post, but as far as I know, nothing has changed. So I will link that below. So in a nutshell, starting with font, I do Times New Roman 12 point font, has never failed me. You definitely want to double space your manuscript. Uh, this is you know, kind of based on the old convention that, you know, people would leave notes in the margin. But even, you know, agents who are reading on the screen, it's easier to read on the screen if it's double spaced. And I don't know if it makes a difference if they're importing into Kindle, but who cares? They ask for it double spaced, so we double space it. Now, the hitch here is you can't just, if you're in, if you do type in Word, if you just double space format the entire thing, it's going to mess up your chapter headings and mess up that formatting. Um, that is not the best way to do it. Um, it's best to um, format it as you go or use something like Scrivener to do it for you. That's just a pro tip because my first manuscript, which I did do in Microsoft Word, I, um, I double spaced the whole thing and I think I gave some agents somewhere there were just like ridiculous amounts of space on my chapter heading pages. So that's just my little pro tip there. So chapter headings, I actually counted the spaces on screen for you because Scrivener does auto format my chapter headings for you, but your chapter headings are going to start 13 spaces down the page. You're going to enter, enter, enter 13 spaces down the page. So it'd be like chapter one, you know, it would be space, space, spaces, 13 spaces, chapter one, and then like a few more spaces before the chapter starts. I do indent the first sentence of every paragraph. That is just basic formatting that I have set up in Scrivener. I like the way it looks. So I do do that. I don't think indenting versus not indenting is going to make or break you with any agent or editor. And then what is most important, and I actually do see authors mess up all the time, this is just for ease of like record keeping. At the top of every single page, you want to have your name, your last name, your surname, in all caps, a space, I do like a straight line, the name of your manuscript, all caps, another line, space, and the page number. Again, Scrivener nicely formats this for me it looks so it looks lovely but there are ways to get that format matting to work in microsoft word by inserting a header and you want to insert that header on every page except for the title page that's really all you need to know i mean that really is just my manuscript formatting in a nutshell um don't use weird fonts don't make your uh the font too large make sure to double space um, somebody asked me about putting the word count um, on the title page of a partial. I did that a lot because I, I honestly just opened up kind of my, my full document and deleted the chapters that I didn't need and I just left the title pages is and nobody got mad at me. So it's probably fine. At the end of the day, as long as you are hitting those basics that I just mentioned, the font and the, the typeface and um, the font size and the typeface and the thing on the top and the chapter headings. And the chapter headings don't have to be perfect, by the way. Like if you just indent a bit on the page um, delineating chapter, you're fine. Um, 
you'll be golden. You're not going to get in huge trouble unless you're using like Comic Sans and bright pink font in, you know, 20 point font. Uh, but I'm going to pop you over to on screen. I'm going to show you, as I just promised, uh, how I set up my documents in Scrivener and how my documents look in Microsoft Word. So you will see me again in a few minutes. So here is my sample manuscript so you can see what my formatting looks like. Now, this has been spit out of Scrivener. So I do a function called compile in Scrivener that spits everything out the way that it needs to look. So that's why it looks like this on top. Um, if you watch my other videos on Scrivener, you'll see kind of how to set up your title page. And it looks like this. So you put your name and your address and your email, and I add my agent's name and, and the agency. Obviously, if you are querying, you aren't going to have this. You'll just have your information. And then there is a formula in the compile function for putting your word count at the upper right hand corner of the screen. And then you have your title and who you are. You can kind of see the spacing and how this looks. So moving on to the next page, as you can see here on the header, you click in, you have your surname, a slash, the name of your manuscript, and then the page number. Whether you're using Scrivener or Microsoft Word, there should be a formula function for the page number. You're not manually putting this in, it will auto fill in the appropriate page number. And of course, your page numbers start on the second page, not on your title page, but on the first page of the actual manuscript. As you can see, the first chapter is spaced somewhat down the page. I counted it, it's about 13 spaces. And then there is some spacing between here and it's starting. There's one, two, like two, two and a half. There's some, there's some formula stuff going, formatting stuff going on here. But, and then the paragraph start, you can see I like to indent my paragraphs. And then this is all double spaced. And that is really it for the way that the manuscript is actually going to look. I'll just scroll a little, you can see how this looks. It's all pretty straightforward and simple. Okay, so now we are in Scrivener and just a sample document that I have. And first I wanna show you, they give you the title page or the formatting here. I changed the font to Times New Roman so that everything matches, but then you just fill in your info and you see here's the formula for the word count there's a formula here for the project name and the project title and your name. I've honestly never used it and maybe that makes me like a fail at Scrivener, but I just type in the full thing. Now, next you're going to go into compile and this is how you take everything that's in your Scrivener and you're exporting it, you know, into other formats. Now they have a standard manuscript format, but being perfectly honest, I don't use this. I always do custom and I kind of set it up myself. They do have other settings you can play with, but the reason I don't use the standard manuscript format is that it makes everything courier new and it converts italics to underlines. And that's very old school manuscript formatting and I don't recommend using that. So if you go into custom, so first of all, you can export it as a Word doc, which is my preference. And then you're gonna fuss around here to set it up the way you want. Starting with page settings, as you can see, this is where you generate your header and it's as easy as filling these in yourself. So there's surname, manuscript name, and then leave the formula for the page number. See, it's got that courier new font, hard pass. So I'm gonna switch this to Times New Roman. I don't have a footer, so I'm just not gonna bother with it down here. You don't really have to mess with anything here. Make sure the not on page one is checked for the header. And then you're gonna go to transformations and this is where you tell it not to convert italics to underlines because that is super old school. You want your italics to stay italics. Then here you also want to uncheck convert m dashes to double hyphens. I actually didn't even realize Scrivener was doing this until my agent manually converted all my double hyphens back into m dashes. And so I now uncheck this to save us all a bit of trouble. Same thing, I don't like converting ellipses. And last but certainly not least is this formatting section. I'll be perfectly honest, I've done mostly a lot of trial and error to get this to the way that I wanted it to be. 
Um, I just fuss around with it until it does what I want. And so the first thing that I do is I change the font of all of these manually. Do that by hitting here, and then I change them to Times New Roman. There is perhaps a more sophisticated way to do this, but I haven't figured it out. Now I'm gonna uncheck title because I don't have a subtitle for my chapters, but you might. And in that case, you want to leave that. Level one is the body text. So again, you're gonna change it to Times New Roman. As I mentioned, I'm not 100% sure what all of these are. Again, I'm going to uncheck title and I'm gonna do the body text. In case you didn't know, I'm very basic when it comes to Scrivener. I get it to work for me the way that I need it to work, but I am not an expert. Why does this make me the perfect person to show you Scrivener? Well, I'm just like you. So I always just do these conversions where I change all of these to Times New Roman. I uncheck the title because I don't need it. And then text means it's gonna pull the text from the actual files. Usually this does the trick. In this case, I'm not going to compile the document because I'm working in a Scrivener file where I have imported my Word document into Scrivener, uh, which I'm gonna be sharing in another video in the future, you know, showing that you can do that into Scrivener. I basically took a Word document and look, it auto-created all of my chapters. It's pretty nifty. But because of that, the formatting is a bit messed up and there is some manual work that needs to be done to get these to look the way that they should so that when I hit compile here, the document actually turns out the way I want it to. So I'm not gonna show you that final step, but trust me, when you hit compile, it'll most likely spit out what you need into Word. And if it doesn't, you just fuss with the settings until it does what you want it to. So going back to the contents page. So now I have these custom settings and I wanna show you. You can also do other formats such as PDF, rich text format, plain text, etc. And adding front matter, you're going to select your page and that's where you would pick this, the title page that's here. You would edit it to fit your book and your information. And then again, you hit compile and it's like magic. And we're back. See, didn't I tell you like super straightforward, super simple and Scrivener, I really can't recommend it enough. Like I should make a whole video just, you know, of me sitting like, you know, weeping like with like a shrine in the background to Scrivener because Scrivener has completely changed the way that I write. It makes novel writing so much easier, partly because, you know, you just hit the compile button and you're like, ta-da, gorgeously formatted Word document. Um, and as I said, no one's gotten mad at me since, so I must be doing something right. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, drop down in the comments more requests for videos. This came from a YouTube comment and I am always excited when I see that someone wants to hear about something that I can very easily talk about and help you out. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And if you don't already subscribe to the channel, uh, subscribe if you, if you are interested. I post videos two to three times a week. I talk about craft and the industry. I do, you know, helpful on-screen demonstrations for things just like this. So thank you so much for watching and happy writing everyone.